Musai Cek yo Hi everybody, Russ from the West End Network. Hope you are all safe and well, my friends. I really, really do for you round here. Give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a bloody good subscribe. Give it a bloody good subscribe. On the road to Frankfurt. I'm, I'm not, clearly, I'm not. My friend, I know some, tomorrow we've got the preview of the Frankfurt game, uh, which Anton will be doing, and that'll be nine o'clock tomorrow, and we'll have some people out there already in Frankfurt, so we'll be getting a feel of what it's like out there. One person who's uh, who knows what it feels like out there um, is, is our special guest today. And we're very, very um, pleased. We had we had Robo on last week. Now we've got now we've got another man of the nineteen seventy six European Cup Winners Cup final um, team and squad, and also forty seven years ago to the day he was part of a side that won the FA Cup. To the day, to the day, Pat. Right, to the day. That. Yeah, you surprised me there. 3rd of May. 3rd of May, special, 1975. Special it was, yeah. yeah. Almost 50 years. Got a few yeah, more years yeah. and then we have the 50th yeah, anniversary. Yeah. I know. How are you? How are you, Pat? I'm good. Yeah, I'm um, I'm still involved. Um, I, I think last time, no, I'd left the last time I spoke. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm at Millwall for my sins <laughs> and I'm doing a bit of part-time scouting there, which keeps me involved. So... You get to see some of your old friends on the circuit. Um, I've done a couple of games. I was at Palace Youth Team yesterday and I was at QPR today. I went down to Loftus Road. I call it Loftus Road, they changed the name. Yeah. To watch their reserves. So that, that was good. Um, and then I'm at Leighton Orient on Saturday. Oh, very nice. And what's the general, uh, in, in terms of obviously going to see the, the sort of the reserve, or the under 23s, as they're called, isn't it? Um, generally, is it, is it a really high standard you're seeing, particularly, you know, as you said, Loftus Road and Palace and sort of the boys, obviously West Ham's under 23s, second in the PL2. Um, they won 5 0 yesterday, but sort of the general standard you're seeing, is it good? It's, it's a different game, it's uh, very tactical. You can see that they've been coached in terms of our shape and um, and their jobs and what, what to do and what not to do. Uh, physically, I think they're stronger, they're taller. Some mm. some of them, not all of them. Um, technically, I'm not so sure where there's a great change in that. Mm. Um, and individual players may be not as prevalent as they were when I was a young player. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously we're be, you know because obviously it moved from sort of the combination league, you know, the reserve leagues into sort yeah. of the under twenty threes, and there's been lots of people talking about the differences between you know the under twenty threes, obviously where you used to get a lot of the old, the first teamers play for the reserves, but obviously not necessarily the under twenty threes now, and so is he so obviously it's. Is it? A, is it? I'm thinking. Is it sort of a sort of quite a hard learning curve for the under twenty three sort of breaking into the first team because they're not being played with first teamers? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've had exactly this conversation. I had it um, yesterday, and I had it. I must have had it on my own today because I didn't meet anybody. <laughs> but I was on the phone to somebody, and we were talking about it. And yeah. strange enough, on Monday I was uh, invited down the training ground. Uh, Prior to the Iron Track game, yeah, uh, there was me, Mervyn Day, and uh, Keith Robson, yeah. And part of the day was that we met David Moyes, and we were just talking about buying players, and I asked him how much research goes into the character of the player, mm. and he said, "Unbelievable research because of the money they're obviously paying for a player." Yeah. But the other question I threw at him as a, a, a side ball, basically was I watched the reserves the other week, the 23s, and of which the back four were 21, yeah. 21 years of age, 22 and 22. And I said, in my uh, opinion, it's an under-19 league, basically. Mm. So why are these boys playing at that level? There's no 
next step other yeah. than the first team. Mm. So he said, how old was you when you got in the first team? I said, I was 18, but I said, I never stayed there. I said, it was like glancing. I maybe the following season, I had five or six games. Mm. And, it, and he said he felt that it was the players were different and they needed just that fraction more time mm. to develop. He yeah. felt so 21 would be an age where he was looking at them and considering them with more maybe positivity in bringing them into the squad. It's see, the thing is, I think I'm not saying that the old managers weren't under pressure, they most certainly were, mm. but I think the modern day manager is under extreme pressure. Yeah. You're totally right. You're totally so right. He, he cannot afford to, to gamble with a young player as much as we we romanticise about it a little bit and think, oh, why don't he play him and give him a go? Mm. It's it's very difficult. Yeah, and you're totally right. I think I think now, uh, particularly in the last sort of uh, couple of weeks, we've obviously, we've obviously Europa League and the Premier League and maybe it's not having the big enough squad. There was a big sort of swell of opinion to get you know, a couple of that, those sort of that, that back four, particularly into the first team. Yeah. Um, and, and he, and he went against it. And, yeah. and, and as you said, it might be because maybe next year, they say who's, who's the captain down the 23s, he's 21 now. So, you know, as you said, he's sort of on mm. the peripherals. Sure. Um, yeah. The, the boy Ashby, the right back's really good. And so, yeah. you know, there's a couple of them, I think there next season, you'll see a little bit more of them. And I think, I think yeah. we've been unlucky as well this season because, West Ham tradition, you know, obviously the for a big team, usually the first couple of rounds of the cup, you usually get like no disrespect, but you get a Scunthorpe or an order shot. Yeah. We've had United City, and so it's not fair to necessarily throw the boys, throw, you know, a bunch no. of boys in straight away. Yeah. Um but yeah, we'll see. But I mean we got I mean I think was it the when we played Dinamo Zagreb, I think we had seven of the under twenty threes on the pitch at the end of the game. Yeah, so, I mean, it, I mean, if it goes your way, you you can you can get you can gamble like that. Mm. But I can fully understand where he's coming from, yeah. um, because every defeat is a setback when you pick the papers up the next day. They, in the old days, as old Holland got his debut and mm. um, Peter Grote got his debut in goal, which happened the two of us at that time in 1969. Pete yeah. played against Tottenham, I played against the Arsenal. Um, and the, the comment in the paper was, Holland will be looking forward to getting back to the sanity of the reserve team. <laughs> <laughs> so, I suppose that says that I did do that well. But uh, it, was, it was a great, it was a great uh, privilege to, to actually play, you know, and yeah. it was a... Something that lots of kids dream about, and even what well, didn't go my way that night. The, the following game I played, the following season was Man United forty thousand, and I I done a lot better. So you had that taste of what the pressure is all about, but yeah. managers can't afford to do that today. No, exactly. I mean, I mean, talking about that debut, you know, obviously, you know, you nineteen sixty nine Arsenal, West at home. You had obviously the the three boys, the three sixty six yeah, boys yeah, in the team yeah. as well, as well as yeah, you know, Trevor and Billy, and oh, so a fantastic team. Johnny Sissons, yeah. and um, what was that like? So obviously, you came from a, you know you came through the ranks, and that, and then you were on the Upton Park pitch against the Arsenal. You know, do you remember much about your first that that, that sort of game I, itself? I, I do, in many respects. When I say I do, I mean on the Saturday we played Cray Wanderers. Yeah, and in the Metropolitan League, so I played in that, and I was due to sign pro that week, and uh, I got a message from Ron that he wanted to see me at the main stadium to sign the contract. Yeah, so I went up there at twelve. I was I was shaking as I, I wrote the, the signature. <laughs> that thing won't look like, and he threw a, a question at me, and we were playing Arsenal that night. He said, "Would you like to play against the Arsenal tonight?" And my first thought was no. And I thought, well, I can't say no. I better say yes. So I went, yeah, I'd like to. Right, he said, I'll see you back here at six o'clock this evening. Go home and try and rest, and there'll be two tickets for your mum and dad. Right. So I turned up, and um, you're now in that environment. Yeah. And I took Harry Redknapp's place, I think. And Harry come up, wished me well. He's a popular boy. And then they come round. I remember Mike and Peter's coming up and wishing me well. I think Bobby must have done, but I can't remember. I remember more uh, 
Martin. And then we went out because it saps all your strength. And then uh, as we were about to kick off, uh, Georgie Armstrong was playing outside left for the Arsenal and I was outside right for the for West Ham. Yeah. And I'd seen him make his debut when he was 17 for the Arsenal. And he walked across the line and shook my hand and said, all the best, son. And I thought it was lovely, that. Oh, and nice. uh, that was the best thing of the evening. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it went downhill <laughs> after that. But I can always remember it was to actually to put that shirt on and, and actually do it. You can't buy that experience. Yeah. You can't buy it. Whether it's good, bad or indifferent, you can't buy it. Yeah. And just and just for like, you know, just to circle, you know, fill the circle in. Obviously, we played Arsenal at the weekend and lost 2-1 as well. So nothing changes, yeah. mate, in, yeah. in, <laughs> in 50 years. No, yeah. No. But as I said, you know, today is, today is the, the, you know, 47 years to the day that you we won the FA Cup in 1975. Yeah. Obviously, you're an integral part of that side. Um, obviously, we spoke about, you know, making your debut. Walking out of Wembley. I mean, yeah. you know, that's every boy's dream, isn't it? When you're probably starting to walk out Wembley FA Cup final. Yeah, yeah. Okay, again, it's. Uh, I, I don't think you appreciate it two years later. I yeah. think at the time, it's such a build up and um, everything's going on. You know, mm. people want to go to the game, they want tickets. You, you've got your, uh, your training schedule. Um, you, you, you're possibly worried about getting injured. Yeah, yeah. That week. Um, so in training, you, you, you're on, and I, what had happened, we played the Arsenal on the Monday night and, and John told me that night, he called me in, he had a little office where he had a, a fag and a cup of tea and you walk past the opp- opponent's dressing room to, to our one and all of a sudden he went, beckoned me in and I, th- I knew what it was about, <laughs> but I didn't know what, the, uh, what he was going to say. I thought, I hope it's the right one and not the wrong one. And he said, you, you're going to play tonight and you're playing Saturday. He said, don't worry about tonight. He said, but don't let me down. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like one of those ones. I went, no, I won't let you down because I'm on a high now. And uh, I can't say, keep it to yourself. So I went, all right. And I went out and I, I was charged up. And I remember the first person I caught was Alan Ball with a tackle. And... Uh, he picked himself up and I got a little look, but I made a massive mistake. Ten minutes later, I went and charged into Peter Story and caught him <laughs> as well. That was a that was a mistake. And uh, at half time, I thought, I've got to get myself out of this one. So I sidled up alongside him. I went, sorry about that, Pete. He said, don't worry, son. I hope you mean that. <laughs> uh, so we got through that. And then the rest of the week is preparation. You know you're there. Yeah. And... Uh, I mean, in the evening, we went and watched a film called The Night Porter. It was absolutely shocking. There was about five of us. There was me, Kevin, Kevin Lott, Tommy yeah. Taylor, John McDowell, and Mervyn. It's a younger sort of part yeah, of them. Yeah. And then we went back. And then on the day, it just goes so quickly. It's very draining. It's very, yeah. just, you know, you've got to win. That's the most important thing. You've got to win. And then you've got to enjoy it after the game's finished. It's one of those things I can imagine, yeah, it's, it's probably one of those things when afterwards, as you said, now you've had, obviously, 47 years, you know, you can re- reflect on that and looking back yeah. at your career and, you know, it's not only the fact that you pl- you made, you know, over over 300 appearances, you know, first-team appearances for West Ham, but sort of, you know, the FA Cup final, we'll talk about Eintracht Frankfurt in a minute as well, and we'll talk about the, this, obviously, the Anderlecht in, in the final as well in 76, but as you said, it probably... You appreciate. I think that's the same with a lot of players when we've interviewed them. It's like afterwards they appreciate, probably yeah. afterwards, and not in the moment because no. you know you're game to game. At the, you know when you're playing a professional, sure. yeah, as a professional. So, um, yeah, I'm going to bring in Anton. Anton's down here. He, he doesn't. Oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a West Ham fan. His accent doesn't show it, but he's a West Ham <laughs> fan. Hi Pat, how you doing? It's an absolute <laughs> honour to be on with you. Um, the stories I've heard from my dad, who's a who's an East Londoner, um, right. and that's you know that's what's brought me into the world of West Ham. But I've got a question for you though, Pat. Um, obviously, the FA Cup was such a, a big occasion, but we came up against the legend of 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 West Ham. Now you know you were obviously involved with Bobby, etc. But what what was it like coming up against the the legend that is that is Bobby Moore? It, well, it 
if strangely enough, Anton, we walked out uh, side by side the, the teams, and and he walked past me because he was obviously captain. He was going to take Fulham out, and he looked at me and he said, "How are you?" He just called me Patsy Boy. How are you, Patsy Boy? And I won't tell you what I said, but in terms <laughs> of, I said I'm really nervous. He said, "You'll be all right. Don't worry about it." And then you're playing against an opponent, and yeah, yeah. Well, he, just, he always seemed to have time on the ball. You know, uh, he was he had an assurance uh, about his play, reaching on an arrogance, but not arrogant. He was a, he, I, I got to know him better as I got older. Uh, I was in awe of him as a kid. You can imagine he they'd won yeah. the World Cup. It was only a year later I went to the club. Um, but as I got older, and I met him more socially at certain events and that. I warmed to him very much, and he was a charming man. And in a way, he was quite a, a, a sort of shy man in a, in a funny mm. sort of way. But tremendous football, and, and on the day, they played quite well, Fulham, in fairness. We didn't play particularly well on the day. And Fulham were on the crest of a wave, basically. They were beating first division sides, and, and they were flying a little bit. Um, but he, he was so well respected by everybody, everybody. And I think that's nice to hear, Pat, as well, you know, especially when you were opposition, but he had that kind of calming effect even yeah. on on you, knows you from yeah. from from, yeah. from the time with you as well. So it's, it's yeah. nice to hear. No, it was yeah, uh, it was it was uh as I say, it was strange and, and at the end of it I never went up to him. I forgot to be honest with you, I'm too happy that we've won. Uh, <laughs> of I, course when, I, when I look at the video, there's two or three players made a point of getting over to Bobby quickly and just shaking his hand, yeah. which was nice. You know, he was, he was, what he, he was Mr. West Ham in many respects. Mm. Do you he think, was. Pat, then, you know, when, when you're coming up against someone who you've watched and won the World Cup, like you said, for West Ham, you know, I know you treated them like an opponent, but was that like a kind of, I suppose the dream come true is playing in the same team as him, but, um, you know, coming up against them, does that kind of emulate the, the experience or is the FA Cup itself the, the thing that takes over the experience, you know? No, no, I think I think what it, Anton, I think the experience is playing in the FA Cup. I mean, yeah. Bobby was part of it. Um, I mean, I played against my idol, George Easton, who, when I was a kid, I was an Arsenal supporter and I played against Stoke and George was 36 years of age and he's out there and I'm playing against him and I'm yeah. thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, there's, I was n nine or eight when I watched him. But no, I think that the day you're there, you're there to win, you know, and that professionalism will always come through uh, with players. I think, you know, that's the opponents. We've got to win this game. And, and Bobby was part of the, of the, the enemy in, in yeah. many respects. So you, that's how you see it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Another question before I do go, though, is, Talk to me about the celebrations after you won it. What did you get up to as a team? Well, it, it was it was quite funny, really, because they um, what happened was the supporters come over the top of the of the barriers, which was it was a it was a bad time at that time. There was a lot of problems in football, mm. but we we were ready to go, and I think John McDowell tells of the same experience. And I had my medal in my hand. And we went, come on, let's go. So we're going to go now do a circuit. And over the top they come. There was hundreds of them. And a fellow ran up and put his arm around my shoulder. He said, Pat, my, my wife cut your hair on Thursday. <laughs> I was going hairdressers in, in, in Bethel Green. And it was her old man. And uh, I went, right, oh, crap. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the police now decided they wanted the players back in again. So now, me and John Medell are on the outside trying to get in with the supporters. Everyone else is behind the barrier, safe and sound. And I'm holding on to that medal like, like you would never believe the grip. And there was a cop, he said, where are you going? I said, we're players. He went, yeah, of course you are. And of course we've got all the clothes. He thought we were supporters. And John Medell <laughs> told us the same story. So for that second, you get quite fearful. And then we got back to the sanity of the area we were supposed to be in, and then they released us again, and it was just fantastic, you know. And uh, I mean, a lot of the Fulham supporters, I think, may have gone by then. I'm not sure if they had, because it was a great, uh, what they did was was fantastic, where they got mm. to the final. So I think their supporters may have stayed on and supported them, which was good. 
But for West Ham, it was incredible. Right? It was a it was a big big day for the club because the last time they won, I think, was the ten years before. Yeah, uh, 64, 65, yeah. Yeah, it when they beat yeah. Preston. Yeah, so I think no, that's am- right, it's, it's amazing to think that you know someone ran on the park and went, <laughs> oh my God, your ear. I love it, yeah. and that kicks it, and that sticks in there, isn't it? You know, such that's a big I love it. Yeah, it is. yeah. It is. yeah. So do I. I that, that <laughs> always make I, it's a it's a working class game. Yeah, and, and hopefully yeah. it'll always stay the same. I know it's changed because it's expensive, it's corporate, but the working yeah. class people make football. That's what it's yeah. all about. Most Absolutely. Definitely. Pat, you're a total legend, mate. I'm going to leave you with Russ to carry on the show. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me. <laughs> Thank Take you very much. And have a good summer. Oh, have a good <laughs> Thursday. Have a good Thursday. Yeah, exactly. Have yeah, a good yeah, Thursday. Yeah, 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 Speak to you Cheers, later, mate. Pat. See ya. Thanks, Anton. Nice meeting you. There we go. You see, see, he just jumps in, just jumps in. It's just like, anyway. So let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about Thursday. Obviously, um, it was great to see you and some of the boys on the pitch half time um, yeah. on Thursday. That was really nice. Because um, we don't necessarily, because I think it was, I think there's, there's a section of the crowd who, who maybe didn't put two, haven't put two and two together because they don't necessarily know the history behind the oh. Eintracht Frankfurt and West Ham. Um, and also, you know, it's, it's quite funny how obviously, you know, we lost the first leg 2-1, although it was at their their gaff when you yeah. played in 76. So, sure. you know, what was it What was it like um, getting back to, to London Stadium and uh, and seeing some of the old boys again? Was it nice? Yeah, it was really nice. I mean, in fairness, I've got to take my hat off to him. Tommy travelled all the way from Northampton and John yeah. McDowell travelled all the way from Blackpool. He's moved yeah, up yeah. there with his family. And he, en route, he picked Tommy up and the two of them come in. Billy, I see quite a bit of Billy Jennings. Yeah. Um, when I say I see quite a bit of, we bump into each other at certain functions, yeah. uh, the 75 side and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Mervyn, I see because he scouts for Glasgow Rangers. So he's at all the games and I invariably bump into Mervyn. <laughs> And then Robbo, Mad Robbo come down because he does the corporate. Mad Robbo's Mad Robbo, isn't he? Absolutely yeah. mad. As well. I love him. He's, he's a fanatical West Ham supporter, I've got to say. And then Trevor popped uh, down at half time and went on the pitch. So so there was a few never made it. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Keith Coleman's in Cyprus. Yeah, um, Frank, Frank and Billy. Frank, <laughs> Frank never comes to any of the dudes. No, he doesn't. No. For some reason. But uh, it would have been it would have been lovely to have the, the whole team. We obviously bless him, Graham. We lost oh, yeah, Graham, uh, but all the other boys are around. It it would just been nice to have a a, mm. a real get together. That would have been lovely. Yeah. Well, maybe or maybe with you know obviously with, with the next game on Thursday and then you know potentially I think there's enough in the game to. Yeah. yeah, I think there's enough. I think we'll be fine. I think there's enough in the game on Thursday um, for us to turn it over. Then, obviously, then there's the whole, you know, the last sure. time we were would be 70. That could be a time to, yeah. to maybe try and get some. I think the club on. should, should uh, if I'm going to be critical, it should make a real effort to make mm. it pro- a proper day for, for the players and their wives. Yes. You know? I was yeah. recently invited to Bournemouth. It was their 50-year celebration. I went there in 1970 mm. on loan. I was a 20-year-old coming on 15. I mean, it was just <laughs> traumatic from West Ham Reserve to... John Bond was a manager. Tim oh, McDougall wow. was up front. I mean, they had a good side. Yeah. And they invited me with my wife. And we went Friday night and had a meal. And then the Saturday, they did the same again. And we watched the game. And it and sort of... I'm it, fellas there that I hadn't seen for 50 years yeah amazing. you know and we're all we're all mourned differently um yeah. but it was it was very emotional and it was terrific yeah. you know and I'd like to see West Ham do it just yeah. that bit better mm-hmm. you know yeah. and, get, and get a group of, of players and their wives because they were part of it those mm-hmm. girls and uh and just celebrate together it'd be nice yeah no I definitely no I definitely agree and I think it'd be it'd be, yeah. it'd be a great thing um Obviously, you know, let's talk. Let's talk about you know seventy six. Obviously, yeah. Anderlecht, um, but before then, obviously Eintracht Frankfurt in the semis, and the, I mean, everyone talks about the return leg at Upton Park. You know, it's by the sounds of it, everyone I've spoken to went. So it must have been about two hundred thousand people were there by the sounds of it. But um, how it, does that stick in your mind as one of the your greatest as one of the greatest? games you've been involved in because obviously it was such a phenomenal um the atmosphere and everything around it 
Well, I'll, I'll, I'll digress slightly. Okay. I'm going to go to the first leg because yes. I, I hadn't played for five weeks. So I, yeah. I think the last game I looked at it the other day and I thought, blind, that's a long time. We played Leeds and, and I must come off with a hamstring injury. Yes. Um, and I yeah. never played against Den Haag in the two games. No. And I missed four four league games at least. Yeah, because you missed and, over, over a month, a month and a bit. You were Yeah, right. and I think... We travelled out on the Tuesday. I'm not sure if we trained Tuesday when we got there or the following morning. I honestly don't know. But as I was about to get on the bus after training, John was waiting for me. It was the old, it was the old Wembley one again. So he said, can I have a word with you? I thought, here we go. <laughs> here we go again. Here we go. Are you fit? Yes. Are you sure you're fit? Definitely. You definitely fit. Yes, John, I'm fit. Right, you're playing tomorrow. Fine. Don't let me down. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, that, he brought me straight back in. I think what he did, Russell, I think he trusted the fact that I would work hard up and down and yeah. just give the side a little bit more steel, mm. you know, knowing that you could rely on someone who was going to get back goal side. It, being a coach, I, I see how important it is. Serious now, yeah. So anyway, we're back at we're back at West Ham, and it was just a horrendous day. Not mm. evening. I mean, the, it, all day it rained, and when we come out together, um, the left back was alongside me. I think he was quite a tallish lad, and I looked at him, and I could see his face. I mean, my neck was it was like that. It was just it, you could feel it in your body. It was incredible, and um, I think I mentioned it before. When you're in the dressing room, our dressing room was as the turnstiles were just outside. So you go click, yeah. click, 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 and then you know they're coming in. And that's all you're hearing, click, click, click. So your body, you're just building up to this atmosphere. Anyway, I looked at this, this the player for, for Eintracht, and you could see he looked at me as if to say, whoa, and that's how it was. <laughs> and it, it never abated. And you got out there and you were swept away with it. It was quite interesting because I, I was lucky to go there the other night and watch the game. Mm. And the atmosphere was fantastic, but but I don't think you can beat Upton Park. And and don't get me wrong, no. the supporters were terrific, and they got behind the side, and there were twenty thousand more of them. Yeah, although we don't know where we were in West Ham that night when when we played and all those years yeah. ago. Yeah, but it that that night at Upton Park will stay with me forever. It was just yeah. it was electric. Mm. I think you're right, and I think also I think. And over the, obviously, we've had three tyres now, so to speak, in the Europa League in terms of two-legged affairs. Um, and the Eintracht Frankfurt, I think the previous tie, the Leon tie, both very different atmospheres yeah. to when we played Seville in the second leg. And obviously, I think that's, and that's an important thing. The fact is, you know, when you played Eintracht Frankfurt, it was the second leg at home. And yeah. I think that's... And, and and obviously we had we, we I mean when we played Seville we were one nil down and we came and 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 the crowd were just phenomenal and you know and, and I've never I think it's the same atmosphere I think that you know that was that's that was that surpassed anything this this year better than Eintracht Frankfurt better than the yeah. Leon game this year because it was the second leg and we knew what we had to do and it's yeah. almost like we didn't know because it's very new to a lot of us to play in European football sure, as yeah. fans so it's like you know it's, it's a very strange thing but. Uh, Obviously, we won three one, and then we go to and then we go to Andelect to play Andelect, yeah. which is one of those bizarre things that happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, obviously, you scored, and yeah. Mad Robbo scored, um, but you know it, it wasn't it wasn't to be. What 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 do you think in, in terms of that? Game? Was it the fact that obviously Andelect had the home advantage? Do you think? No, I, 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 once you're out there, you don't really think yeah. about it. West Ham took a lot of supporters. I mean, when yeah. we when we uh, turned up, there was a big forecourt with the, the stadium. There was bars and everything. There was a fair. I think I mentioned to you about the yeah. the big wheel. Yeah. And uh, and they come out in their hundreds, the supporters with their bottles of beer and, and lagers, and, and they were up for it. So there was a lot of support for West Ham there on the evening. Um, I didn't have a a great start. I mean, I really struggled in the first 20 minutes. I don't know when I got the goal, but it was like a godsend, really. Mm. Just like, oh, thank God for that. I've done something. And um, 
I never even thought about it. It was a European goal and a final. It was just a, I put the ball in the, in the net. Um, so that that was I was really grateful for that in many respects. Bill's header and I'd just got on to it and it was my left foot. You know, it was, was a collector's yeah. piece, that one. Um, and then it was just before half time and the worst person who could have got it was Renton Brick. Yeah. You know, who was a top player. And uh, the way, if you look at it, the way he took it, he's sort of got Merv, he's, he's unbalanced Mervin with his movement and he's created space and you know he's going to score. You know, he's that, that's that type of player. And then the second half, we, we become a little bit disjointed possibly. We lost uh, Frank and uh, um, Johnny Mack went uh, left back. I went into midfield, Alan mm-hmm. Taylor come on. So there was a little, a little bit of disruption. I mean, it's easy to... Criticised, but that was the decision made at the on the yeah. night. Uh, but we never really got us back into the groove again. Yeah. In fact, I was chatting to the boys about it the other night, you know, and and they've got opinions. I won't say what they are, <laughs> but you know, some are more vocal than others. But it was um, when Robbo got us back into it. We're a great header. Uh, yeah. That's looping header. Um, then you, it's it was it was in the balance. I I just. Felt they were, they were the better side in the second yeah. half. Yeah, you know we have to hold our hands up to that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Right, let's take some questions because we get loads of questions. I'll keep what? and I'll keep because there's loads of people watching and they obviously they, they okay. want to ask you a question. So that's the idea. That's the idea. Yeah. That's what oh, we do. Right. Uh, let's try. I'll try and get a nice selection. Right. Okay. Um, right. We've spoken about your debut, so we'll let that one go. Um, how would you How would you make it today, Patsy? In today's modern game. Are oh, the pitches more dangerous today? Are the you know is 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 because obviously it's a different type of game now. Do you reckon you could you know if you was in the modern game? How would still... I cope? Yeah, how do you cope? I'd cope all right. <laughs> I, I don't know what standard I'd be at. I don't know what level I'd be at. I mean, the one thing I would say is um, when you look at the standards in the Premiership, yeah, most of these boys now are internationals. Yeah, so we have to you have to accept that. Um, yeah. that the standard to get in a West Ham side now, maybe, maybe, but whenever I look at um, the best ever 11 West Ham players, now I know you can go back to older chaps like myself, six of the side I played in are always in that team. Yeah. Park, Stewart, Martin, Bonds, mm. possibly not Lampard, uh, Brooklyn, Devonshire, Moore, Peters, yeah. would all be possibly in that side and there's yeah. about three others who come in like Julian Dix and Di Canio yeah. you know I'm sure whoever's watching will say oh no I like that one but yeah. the hardcore of the team that I played in the 70s and early 80s would, would be in that side so fitness wise I, I wouldn't have a problem I could run yeah. all day so that wasn't a problem I was an up and downer uh, whether I'd got in the West Ham side today I don't know but I'd, I'd be at a pro- Professional level, I think I'd be able to cope. Love it, love it. Right, okay. Uh, from Gatesy, you've got a penalty to save your life. Who takes it? So Jeff, Billy Bonds, Ray Stewart. Who takes your penalty? Ray Stewart. Ray Stewart I should say Jeff first. You should. But I'll keep going back to that Stoke one. I don't know why. <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't do. <laughs> but either, I would either go, I mean, Ersty was a tremendous, they're both the same, him and Ray. Yeah. They used to smash it. Um, and Jeff was, I, I think Jeff was a top player when I look yeah. back and, and his presence. If ever I spoke to Arsenal, uh, like Frank McClintock or Bob McNabb, I got to know from my association at Tottenham when I was working with Venables. Mm. They spoke about Ersty, like oh, you, fantastic praise, fantastic mm. praise, along yeah. with Bobby um, and Martin. But I mean, Ray was phenomenal, wasn't he? I mean, yeah. I. I can't. It was funny. It was I. He was um, uh, during like during the game. I I sometimes sit in the crowd like when I'm from doing the box there. I sometimes sit yeah. in the crowd, and I was sat and 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 uh, Tonka was behind me. Yeah. And all he all he kept doing was nudging me. And I'd have done that. I'd I'd have beat that man. <laughs> he, he wouldn't have got past me. I'd have kicked that there. All right, right. I'm trying to watch the game. I would have done that. I, done... I love him. He's so funny. He, He's so he funny. had no fear. No, no. When you were around him. I'm not saying he was a top top player. He was a really good player, but he had no fear, mm. and 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 that's a big thing in football. 
if you can have that sort of mentality, it, it means so much. And to take a penalty, I mean, it's a lot of pressure that. Yeah. Uh, but he had great self-belief, especially in those situations. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, it takes a certain type of player, doesn't it, to, yeah, to, take, it to take the penalties, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, without a doubt. Um, growing up, who was the player you aspired to emulate? Oh, nobody, really. Nobody. Um, no, I don't think that. And that's strange. I had my uh, idols. Who was, your, who was your idol then? Who was your George idol? George Easton then? and Joe yep. Baker yep. When, uh, when I was a little boy. Uh, Bobby Charlton when I was a real little boy. At six or seven, because uh, Man United and, and the Busby Babes, yeah. everyone everyone supported Man United. Yeah. And then uh, my first game was West Ham versus Fulham. My uncle, I think my uncle Joe took me over there, bless him. And, um, and then my dad took me to watch Manchester United at, against the Arsenal at Highbury and Arsenal beaten 5-1. And I think it must have been near... The Munich air crash shortly after. I can't swear on it, but I think it was. And my dad said, "Look," he said, "You've got the right colours on." He said, "I'll bring it." What he was an Arsenal supporter. I will yeah. take it to watch the Arsenal. So Arsenal were my team. My favourite, as I said, was George Easton and Joe Baker. Yeah. I don't think I ever went out to emulate them. I, I just wanted to be a footballer. Of course, yeah. You know, yeah. and and I think everybody inspires you. You know, you had Dennis Law playing then. And Charlton was fantastic. There was a lot of great players that you watched on the telly and you went out and suddenly you're that type of player, you know. That's how we did. I mean, I remember uh, going on to one of these holiday camps and uh, a fellow had a go at me for not passing the ball. And he said, you should do that. And I said, I'm not Cliff Jones, you know. So <laughs> I was only nine, but I'd seen Spurs. So that side, sort of you, 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 copy, you copy people. Yeah. Yeah, you see, yeah, you, you take inspiration, don't you? And it's like yeah. it's the same as kids, isn't it? It's like you know, if you go and like, you know, I I have no doubt when when Paolo Di Canio scored that goal, I was at the uh, next day at school or yeah, on the Monday, I was trying to get someone to chip it over to do it. Exactly. You know, they want to copy it. Yeah, yeah that's, and that's do, great. Man. That's the great thing about being a supporter that you've mm. got these dreams and you've got these images that stay with you. You know, I mean, yeah. they remember more supporters than I'll ever remember. You know, yeah. talk about things. I think, bloody hell. You know, it's great, but some people, really. some players do though, Pat. Don't they? Some players, I know, um, uh, Cotty, Tony, TC. He's got like, he, like you know, he's he knows everything. I think yeah. if you, I think who do I interview? I think it was Bobby Gould, and he's got like what? book for every season, and really? it's like a ledger with everything in it. But it's like yeah. all these books. It's like Amazing. crazy, crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's terrific. Yeah. All right. Um, who was the best player you played against? Against or, or toughest yeah. opponent? Who you know? Who did you wait? Oh God, I got him this weekend. But there oh, was a God. there was a, a player for Wolves, a left back called Parker. Yeah. Oh, I just whoa, I just couldn't get past him. There was loads of fullbacks. <laughs> I couldn't get past when I think about it. My toughest opponent was easily Billy Bonds in training. Yeah. We used to, on a Thursday, John wanted to toughen the group up. So he brought in this uh, practice and you were allocated or delegated someone to play against. And you could only play against him. If the ball went askew, then people could nick it and intercept it. But you couldn't leave your the man you were playing against to go and gang up. So yeah. you're on your own. And I've got Bill. And he loved it, John. I didn't because I mean Bill was a real fit, strong man. Yeah. And uh if invariably the pitches over there were quite heavy, which suited him down to the ground. He could run and and he was quite nice to me, he'd always picked me up nicely. But John always said, you know, my favourite time sometimes in football was watching you and Bill go to battle in the man v man. And and what he did, uh, Russell, it he used to use me in that role. Planning matches. I mean, I marked the stand bowls on a few occasions. I marked a chap called Andresan when we played Erevat Yerevan, the captain. Yeah. Um, Antonio, in when we played Fiorentina, I had to mark him. I tried to. Um, so it gave me a good basis uh, in 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 the, the league games. So I know I'm slightly going off groove. No, no. the hardest opponent. 
I met Bill nearly every day of the week. <laughs> is 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 this the guy? Is this is Derek Parkin? Is, is Derek that Derek Parkin. Derek Parkin? There we go. Uh, Thanks for signing in, in the chat. Him and John Trollope, <laughs> for the life of me, I couldn't get past. I always wanted to go on the outside. And yeah. they just they held off and matched me. And uh, I mean, Kenny Sampson was a good good opponent. Chris Hugh was a good opponent. You know, so I played against some good players. And, yeah. you, and you have to – it's good as you get older and you go into coaching, you can relate those experiences to, to your wide players and say, look, try this because if he's as quick as you, you might want to use the ball a bit more mm. rather than keep going down the same avenue. So it's a great experience. You have to sort of go back on that to, to help the kids and, and educate them. Yeah, that's the thing. You've got that first world experience, haven't you, I think? And and that's what I like about the current West Ham sort of youth team setup is that, you know, there's every age group's got an ex pro, ex player, ex West Ham player in there. So obviously sure. Ken, Kenny Brown is is, you know, he's yeah, setting, Ken's, you know, Ken's yeah. and you've got and then you got Kevin and you've got Stevie yeah. Potts and you got Cole, all West Cole, Ham all West Ham boys. It's it's great to see. It's, yeah, it's of great to see. It's important. Yeah, yeah. We had we had Tony Khan a couple of weeks ago, and you know I think we lost our way a little bit a few years ago in terms of went a little bit away from the West Ham way, so to speak. And no, no. Moisey's brought it all sort of into house a little bit more now. So it's it's amazing on my travels the amount of people that would come up to me and say, "What did you do at West Ham?" You mm. know, and 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 we were never. Uh, and you can talk with Tony Carr about this. I can't ever remember doing a shape practice in terms of an 11 against 11 and stopping yeah. it. Never once in all the time. Now, that people could say, oh, that's a thing of the past, but it wasn't because they did coach purely about half being on the half turn and the way the, it was a West Ham way. And that's not mm. me being arrogant. No. I mean, if we were top of the league, I could be as arrogant as you like. But <laughs> you know, we had our good days and bad days. But it was a, it was a wonderful teaching method. Yeah, no, it was, it was, and it's, it, and and you can see it because it's sort of, as you said, the whole, you know, the way it was emulated. You said, you know, you said John Bond, he was, he was the manager there, and da da da. And it's it, how many players sort of went into management and went into coaching. Yes, loads. Um, I mean, it, I mean, obviously, one agree with John Lyle. You know, that's sort of, and I remember, sure. I remember talking to, I think it was. I think it was Stuart Slater and, and he had Tonka at his games at, when he was 14, you know, yeah. just, and, yeah. and stuff like that, you know, for a, a young lads, you know, the first team West Ham player there is, you know, it was, it's incredible. Um, right. A few more than what they will let you go, man. Cause we had a long day outside of Upton Park. What's your favorite ground that you played at that no longer exists? Oh, it's Wembley camp. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Old Wembley camp. Yes. It's old Wembley. Well, that was a, that was, that was all right, wasn't it? Well, I had two charity shields. Yeah. And we lost both of them. We lost the derby, which they were good side derby. And then Liverpool let us have the ball for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> One season. So Wembley and I was I was crestfallen not to play in the Arsenal game. I got injured um, mm. when we played Everton in the first leg. So that that to, I mean to to go there was a fantastic experience. Blimey. Um uh, there was nowhere really. I mean, West Ham was unique, and I don't, mm. I'm not trying to say that because I'm a West Ham boy, no. but it was very unique in its atmosphere. There wasn't yeah. many. I think Anfield was the nearest I've got to it. Um, we were playing, and I was telling the story to someone the other night, and uh, we were 2 1 up. I'd crossed, and Pop Robson got this half volley. You've seen so many of Pop's goals, yeah, and it was a great goal. So I was about ooh, 21, 22. And then they equalise, and then let use it a shot. <laughs> Third, you let it go through his hands. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it, it was a greasy surface. Yeah, thank you. And the, it was the cop end, and it was incredible. It was just like a sea of red and white, and it made you, whoa, here we go. So that, that, was, a, that was the equivalent of, of West Ham, uh, the cop. Oh, and they're yeah. high, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, right, a few more. Have you ever re watched the goal you scored against Hereford in the FA Cup when you went around three or four players to score? Loads of time. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone wants me to look at it. I thought it was okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was a long way to run, I know that. And um, it was it was it wasn't a great time in my career, and it was it really that goal got me back. In the fold again. Uh, I was on my way to Norwich, yeah. and I 
I, I declined the move. I wasn't in the popular books at that stage. And then we played uh, Hereford, and there were so many injuries uh, that Ron had to make me sub. And Bobby got carried off, I think, after about 35, Bobby Moore, 35, 40 minutes. So I've come on, and uh, I've got a great headed goal, top corner, and big Clyde was offside. Um, and then, because right in the light of the death, I got that goal, which, you know, everyone yeah. remembers. And it's, it's a lovely memory because you had goal of the day or whatever it was on the Saturday night. Um, but no, I, I, there's a couple of goals I'd love to have seen. Um, I think I mentioned it, the volley against Leeds. I caught that, really caught that properly. Yeah. Um, and it was on match of the day and my missus wanted to go out for a drink. So uh, I've never seen it since. All right, leave, leave with me, Pat. I'll, cause <laughs> if, if you get that one, I'll buy yeah. you a bottle of wine. No, 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 i tell you why. Because so what we do is we do these. So actually we, we do like these appreciation nights. So actually do one about Pop Robson coming up in, oh, right. in May. So what we, we do... Lovely. And we work, and, and I work with Martin. So you know, I obviously I work at West Ham. And they got, and Martin's the one is the announcer at West Ham as well. Right. And he has the most incredible back catalogue of West Ham. Like right. the club come to him um, for those types of things. Well, tell so, him he can't forget this game because Fergie got injured badly, <laughs> and Big Clyde went in goal, and he put his gloves on. I always remember it. I thought, <laughs> what difference is that going to make? <laughs> and we were losing one nil, and. Um, in the last minute, I I, I caught it. Top no corners. No worries. I put it. I put it. I'll talk. He's he's, in, he's, he's literally yeah. just he just landed in Frankfurt. But when he gets right. back, because he because because Robbo wants to cut the goals that we're trying to find for him oh, as right. well. Oh, that'd be um, there we go. We'll find him. Uh, right, what we got? Uh, Team Hawaii. How did that happen? I broke my leg. Um, I had. I got in the side for the 75. I was sort of in and out a little bit. It wasn't a yeah. bad side at the time because you had Padden, Brooklyn and Bonds with the midfield. And they had a selection of five up front. Billy Jennings had come in and done really well. Robert had come in and done really well. Alan Taylor was on a buzz. Bobby Gould and myself. Yeah. Um, so the following year, I played 50 games. That's the best run I've had at mm. West Ham. And then, so I was looking forward to 76, 77 and I broke my leg at Bristol. Um, so I missed the whole season. And then John said to me, look, there's a chap come over to watch the side. Would you be interested in going playing in Hawaii? So I thought, well, I've played no football whatsoever. Yeah. Asked the wife. <laughs> it took her five seconds. And, um, and we went across. And the incredible thing is, Russell, four of the players followed me out there for the summer. That was Tommy Taylor, Kiwi Robson, Keith Coleman, and the other one was Yulmaz Oran, who did play, but was already out there. So there was yeah. three lads plus myself. Four of us went out to Hawaii. Now, you, that wouldn't happen today. You no. know, I mean, what they did, they they never cancelled your contract. They just allowed you to go and play in America for a period. But I had to come back because my knees started playing up and there was an astro surface there. And I had two months in, I've come back. So it's a, it was a great, great experience. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, uh, just 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 piece up from Kieran because he's he's watching from Brisbane. So just right, to say. yeah. Tell him um, I enjoyed it. It was good stuff. There we go. There we go. Um, right. Okay. Two more. Then we'll let you go, man. Oh, three three more. Go on. Do you still own the red line in Barking? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. Thank goodness. <laughs> I love but, it. I love doing oh, this. What, what happened was a, a friend of mine who was a greengrocer who worked in in and he's passed away since uh, Alan Alan Bristow. He said, your fans going in business? And I had nothing to drop into. I was going into football, hopefully, coaching. Yeah. But I had no – it wasn't paying enough at that stage. And so I had a chance of uh, getting a pub. Or a friend of mine wanted to go into a wine bar in Shenfield. So I thought, well, I might get one of them. Anyway, yeah. it ends up, sod's law, as they say, I've got both of them. I've got the <laughs> pub and the wine bar. Wine bar was very successful. <laughs> and the pub was hard work. But no, I'm not with it in the red line anymore. <laughs> Good, all right. Two, two more. Right, what's the score going to be on Thursday, Pat? That's that's really difficult. I mean, I I watched some of their game against Barcelona, and what impressed me was their pace in the counter attack. Yeah, you know. Now I know we're a bit similar in that respect as well. I I felt we looked vulnerable down our left side. Yes, in the game I watched, but. 
I I think we cause them problems as well. Hmm. I don't think they're that tight at the back. I think we hmm. could get round the back of them and and frighten them and create chances. I mean, uh, the boy hits the post, Bowen, and then he hits the bar. I mean, it's too easily forgotten when you lose the game. You've yeah. got to look at that, and the manager will definitely look at that and see that as a positive hmm. in terms of, look, this is where we've got. This is where we can get them. And I think on set pieces, they look vulnerable to me. Yeah, so, I, I, think so. I think it's still in way still in a balance. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I think you're right. I think it's, I think that they, they had trouble. Their, their right wing back was, was I thought, was very good. And I yes. thought we yeah. had more luck down there, our right side as well. So it was almost like, yes. it yeah. Was, yeah, I think there's a, it's still, it's, it's an like, interesting one. It is. It really is. I think, and also the, I think the um, the Rangers Leipzig game is still interesting as well. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, could you imagine Rangers West Ham in Seville? Jesus. <laughs> uh, and and lastly, we always have a silly question at the end. Favorite pie mash? What, what's your favorite pie mash shop? Blimey. Well, I, I can only remember one. <laughs> I, I sort of gradually went off it as I got older for yeah. some reason. Um, there was a street in Poplar, Salmon's Lane. So if yeah. you were going towards, if you know the East End and you're going towards the Rotherhithe Tunnel, there's a big church on the left-hand side. Turn right at the light and the pie mash shop was down there. Well, made me laugh. My mum had this sort of can type thing that you had to carry and then they put the liquor and, and everything in that and they sealed <laughs> it for you. And then when we had bath night on a Friday, she used that to wash my hair. <laughs> So I think that's why I've always had curly hair. Yeah, it's the eel juice, yeah. It's all the pie and mash coming out. And it's a, so well, that's how say, we lived in those days. Well, they do say it puts hairs in your chest. So it makes, it makes <laughs> well, you do curly, that. So. Definitely yeah. the bar on it, though. Definitely yeah. the bar on it. So oh, Sam's lane. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Listen, man, thank you so much. You've had a long day, so I really appreciate you coming on, man. No, thanks for inviting me. A, a real giggle, man. But, um, and and I'll, I'll see you around the circuit next yeah. time. We'll, we'll at next one at Lynn Herbert's yeah, event or something nice. like that. It'll be there. And, but, and, um, and the best of luck to everybody on Thursday night. I mean, if they get through to the final, it'll that'll be a fantastic achievement. Yeah, it will be. It will be. And even even not. Even if even, you know, the worst happens and you know, to get to a semi final is is not a bad thing. You know, the first time we've done it since 1976, you know, well, so it's with that with that far near to it, you've got to you've got to cross that line yeah. and get there. Yeah. I, I think they could do it. I've just got a little feeling in me more they might they might get there. Yeah, thanks. We yeah. will do. We will do, man. And yeah. we'll speak soon. I'll kick you out, so don't worry about leaving. I'll kick you out. Oh, I'll kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Take care, Pat. See Thanks you soon, us. man. Take care. Cheers, Let's man. kick there. He is. Pat's been kicked out. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it, gentlemen, ladies. Um, thank you very much for your questions. Uh, some some classic questions, as always. We always finish on a pie mash question, or uh, just because we do, just because we do. Um, and and salmon lane. There we go. There we go. There we go. If you like it, give it give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a subscribe. And we'll be back tomorrow. I'm in the office, so Anton will be doing the daily. Hammers headlines and then the preview for the the Frankfurt game on Thursday that'll be tomorrow as well we should have some a live link with mate Martin and John Matomsky who are in Frankfurt as we speak having a bar having a drink in some Bavarian bar I don't think so I think they're having a pint in O'Neill's it's always an Irish pub it's always an Irish pub is the apparently that's the meeting place is this Irish bar is O'Neill's in uh, in Frankfurt that's where all the play all the fans are meeting so we do that and I think Anton's got a Frankfurt fan on as well so that'd be interesting to get his opinion as well um we've had a few in the chat which is quite fun as well then we'll be then I'm back on back on Thursdays to do the dailies and do the hammers headlines and we're doing the watch along for the uh Biggest game in the last, well, from a from a perspective, you know, last since was it forty six years? Older than me, older than me, unbelievable, unbelievable. We also, when we do that, we'll do our draw for the May members. So basically, for those, anyone who's new, um, you, if you join, there's a button down there, you become a member. Um, you automatically every month enters into a draw um, for a a prize. And it's, I'm just going to do a draw for the sake of it for a prize. Um, this week, this month's draw is a signed Eintracht Frankfurt program, the Thursday program last week, signed by Keith Robson, so who scored in the final with with Patsy. Um, so you know some sort of old and new type thing there. So that'd be nice for someone to win, isn't it? 
that'd be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Uh, thank you very, very much, Hammers Bakes. I've got to sort your thing out, of course, Ham. I'm so sorry. I've, I've been, I've been so busy. Uh, thanks, Dominic Fifty Eight. Cheers, Gatesy. Good questions. Thanks, Adam. Great questions. Next week we'll have another X Hammer on. Don't know. Can't remember who it is. Have I sorted it out? Anyway, we've got loads coming up. Uh, as I said, we've got coming up, coming up in the next few weeks is Trevor Morley. We've got Matty Holmes. We've got Peter Butler. We've got Tim Breaker. We've also got Alessandro Diamante. But only you here because you're here. See, that's who we got coming up soon in a couple of weeks' time. Alessandro Diamante. That'd be fun. As well as some very, very good celebrity slash sportsman guests. Some very good ones. Some very good ones. Just trying to nail them down for the right date. Just trying to nail them down for the right date. That's all. That's all we're trying to do. One of them is, uh, yeah, we've got a film star lined up. We've got um, uh, and two sportsmen at the moment lined up. Yeah, two sports. I mean, we might get lost. I might get Billy Horshaw back as well. He, I, he was a uh, he was at the game. He was at the Frankfurt game. He was at the Arsenal game as well. Um, he was over for for a week, so that was nice chatting to him. So we're going to get him back on the show. Uh, he, he loves coming on. So Billy coming on soon, hopefully as well. We've got um, yeah, two other sportsmen. I don't want to say who they are just yet because I don't want to. But they're one of them. I think you'll really well, actually both you enjoy, but I think one of them you'll really enjoy. Very, very good. Very, very good. Very good, very nice. So yeah. I won't I won't I won't I'll wait to it's wait to it's we've confirmed before I announce who it is. But it's it's a good one. It's a good one. It's someone who's been a bit busy, but he's not so busy now. So we can get him on. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. If you get if you guess it, I'll let you know. If you guess it right, I'll say well done, you get it right. But if you don't if you think you know it is, put it in the comments. That'll do. All right, ladies and gents, thank you very, very much for your time, as always. Um, some great questions. I mean, it's your show. We literally come on. We don't have a script. Anton turns up. It's this, you know, it's, you know, it's this unscripted thing, and I think it works really well, and thank you for so many questions. If you want to become a member and be entered into our our monthly draws, uh, we'll be doing the draw on Thursday, so you can, you've got sort of tomorrow's the last day because it takes 24 hours for us to get find out who's become a member or not um so hit the join button and and join and become a member um, and as always i'd like to thank all of our channel members after each and every one of our shows so take care everyone stay safe wash those hands stay lucky stay cheeky my friends and we'll see you tomorrow bye zee bye ciao ciao for now It's like a family tree, all of you and me.